Are you thinking of applying to dermatology but are struggling to get the publications you need to apply? Well, in this video, I'm going to share my top 8 tips on how to get published in dermatology. Dermatology is a highly competitive specialty and is heavily research-based. And so even though you don't necessarily need to have research experience to apply for dermatology, having some experience in research does make you stand out, particularly during shortlisting and interviews. Plus, the process of conducting and publishing research can actually be quite an education and rewarding experience. This video is particularly aimed at those applying to dermatology in the UK but can also be relevant when you are applying to other specialties or in other countries as well. For those who are new here, my name is Chris and I'm a dermatology trainee currently working in the west of Scotland in the UK. And on my channel, I share videos on dermatology training, life in the UK as a foreigner, as well as medicine in general. So let's get started. Tip number one, you don't need to publish exclusively in dermatology journals. Don't restrict yourself to just dermatology projects. Publishing is already challenging enough and limiting yourself to only dermatology topics is even harder. Broaden your scope and look for projects related to dermatology or just medicine in general. Now, as long as you get yourself published, you will score points no matter what topic you publish in. The skills you gain from conducting the research, writing the paper, doing a literature search is actually transferable to dermatology interviews. For example, during my rotation in genital urinary medicine as a foundation year doctor, I wrote a case report of an HIV patient who developed a widespread rash secondary to his undiagnosed lymphoma. So keep an eye out for cases like this and think about how you can connect these cases to dermatology. Tip number two, choose to publish in PubMed cited journals. Publishing in PubMed cited journals can actually give you more points because they are peer reviewed and are relevant to medicine. Many of the dermatology journals are actually PubMed cited, such as the UK journals like CED or BJD. They, however, can be quite competitive to publish in. An alternative way to look at journals is to consider journals of lower impact factor because they might be easier to publish in. For example, for my first few publications, I published in the BJD case reports which have a low or no impact factor. Some journals have processing fees and so it's something to bear in mind because they can be quite costly. Sometimes your institution might have already paid a membership fee and so these processing charges are waived. Tip number three, send cold emails and be persistent. So consultants and even registrars who are senior trainees sometimes have projects that they want to pursue but often lack the time. By sending out cold emails to various dermatology departments, you can offer to help by doing the groundwork and showing initiative. And by doing the groundwork, aka most of the work, you tend to become the first author as well. And the other thing is to attend dermatology conferences and courses because they offer the opportunity for you to network and collaborate in person, which is often more effective and easier than just emailing. Look out for people who publish frequently with MDs or PhDs because they often have projects that they need help with. Tip number four, stand out by taking initiative. Now, another way of taking initiative is instead of waiting for people to offer you projects, think of ideas that you can do yourself. One way of doing this is to look at existing publications and presentations done in conferences and see if you can expand on these topics or adapt them according to your local context. And this kind of initiative makes you more noticeable and increases the chances of you getting a response. Tip number five, start with case reports or case series because they are easier to write and are likely to be published. The other thing to bear in mind is that these cases can often be used as presentations in meetings and conferences and so you can add additional points to your CV. Another option is to conduct simple reviews or critically appraised topics also known as CAT which is much smaller scale than a systematic review but is also of higher quality. Tip number six, use the available resources out there including AI tools. Speak to your local librarians if you don't know where to start, especially on literature searching because they can help teach you how to do that and sometimes they can even run searches for you. Additionally, think about tools like EndNote or RefWorks which are citation managers and they help automatically create references as you write your paper. You can also consider AI tools and softwares like Consensus and Trip which are softwares that can help do literature searches for you. I have to say I don't trust them 100% because they do sometimes leave things out and so I would still do a manual search as well. Another helpful tool that I sometimes use is Chat PDF, which is similar to ChatGPT but it helps to interpret very difficult complex articles. Tip number seven, understand what your journals are looking for. Each journal has a specific preference and so it's worth knowing what their focus is before submitting your article. Some journals like CED focus on educational content, making it easier to publish interesting 
emerging cases. Whilst bigger journals like BJD or JAD prioritize more significant research, so this would include clinical trials and systematic reviews. Another good tip is to email the editors beforehand to gauge their interest in the topic before you submit. And lastly, tip number eight, be patient and embrace rejection. If you have ever published before, it is a long, arduous process and rejection is very common. My first case report actually took two whole years and several rejections before it was actually published. So I would advise you to anticipate rejections and multiple revisions. However, there can be exceptions to this rule. For example, during the COVID-19 pandemic, I wrote a case report about a patient who had a COVID-19 related rash and this was published almost immediately because it was a hot topic at that time. But this is actually quite few and far between. So remember to stay persistent and be patient. Just keep submitting your manuscript from one journal to another until you hit a jackpot. Thank you for watching this video. I hope this video is useful for anyone who is thinking of publishing, not just in dermatology, but also in other specialties. If you wish to watch more videos about dermatology application, I have a few videos just specifically on interviews and shortlisting. If you enjoy watching this video, please like, comment and subscribe down below. See you next time. Bye!